Hi, the following training video will show you how to acquire tiled images on the iX81 um, for samples that you want to visualize using Brightfield, like for example an HME stained slide. To do this, we have instructions on the system uh, on a piece of paper that's on the computer. There are also instructions, the same ones are replicated here in this PDF. So if you double click here, you can see that these are the instructions for how to do this. So we're gonna follow this step by step and I'm gonna show you um, how to do this. So um, first we need to turn on the microscope for Brightfield, which I've already done, open Velocity and create a new library. So we're gonna open Velocity here. Velocity is now open. Let's create a new library. I'm going to put this in e user data in my folder, and I'm just going to create a library with today's name, which is 30th of July, 2020. Create that library. And I'm gonna to go to video preview up here. So usually, when you look at video preview, it will look like this, look like that. If someone has been doing tiling before you, it will be on XY stage mode, which is why it might look like that. So let's look at the next step. So very important, the first thing is do not put on your sample yet, okay? Instead, we wanna lower the objective fully using the down arrow next to focus. So if you look here, we're gonna press this until it beeps. So what we've just done is lower the objective completely. This lowers it even more than escape and you'll see why that's important in a moment. We're gonna do a calibration that's gonna move the stage quickly and across its full range. So we want the objectives well outside uh, any Z position where they could bang into the stage as it's moving. Okay, so in the video preview mode, we're gonna go to the stage menu and click on calibrate stage. We are in the video preview mode. You can see this is grayed out. Uh, we need to go now to the stage menu and click on calibrate stage, which is all the way here at the bottom. When we do this, you can see that uh, we get an, uh, a message letting us know that uh, the stage is going to move, so we should be careful, remove samples, and ensure there's nothing on there. There isn't, so I'm going to click continue. And now what you're going to see is that the stage is going to move quickly to the corner. So this is why we lowered the objective so that we wouldn't slam into them when the stage is doing this. You can see it moves to the upper left corner, having moved to the bottom right, and then it sort of goes to the middle. Okay, the next step is to check the spatial calibration of the objective you will use. So I know I'm going to do uh, the tiling on a 10x objective, that's what's in position there. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but that is the uh, objective that's illuminated there. So what I need to check before I start doing the tiling uh, is whether my scaling is correct. And so to do that, uh, you need to be in the live video mode and you need to double click on this. This is the calibration tool. When you do that, you'll see here, it will tell you how many microns are equivalent to one pixel. And so this, which is 0 0.61, should coincide with whatever it says here for the objective you're using. So you're doing Retiga color imaging. We're looking at this pixel sizes uh, thing on the wall. And so we're using the 10X. The microns per pixel are 0 0.610. That is the same as this. If it's the same, that's fine. You can just close this or hit cancel. Uh, if it's not, uh, you should make it the same and let the staff know. Now the, now the reason we check this is because if that, nu if that number is wrong, the stage will not move appropriately to different positions and you won't be able to stitch correctly. Now it should almost always be correct, but um, since uh, tiling and stitching involves a lot of time for large samples, you wanna make sure that every single thing that needs to be uh, properly set up is so that you don't waste your time later. Okay. So now, step five, put on your sample, adjust channels as needed, avoid saturation with and without the slide, and save your settings. So this is essentially the same as, as always. So if you need to color the illumination, you should. You're gonna put on your sample. We're going to have conditions that don't saturate. 
uh, with or without the slide because we are also going to take a blank just on, like under normal conditions. Uh, once we've completed all that, uh, then we're ready to move on. So uh, I am going to put on the slide, make sure it's colored, focus, um, and kind of get settings that, that seem reasonable, and then we'll move on with this list of things to do. I've placed a slide, with the, which is a coronal section of mouse brain. I've focused by eye. Um, I've made sure that the exposure uh, gives me a good image that is not saturated, both on the sample, which we are on it right now. You can see, if you look here, uh, these values, which indicate the maximum pixel values and the minimum ones, the maximum ones on the, on the right, are all changing and lower than 4,094. Uh, I I then went to an empty region, so off, completely off the slide, and I did an auto expose here, which is also not saturated, and I made sure to white balance here. So everything is ready to go. I will be able to take a blank image in the current location that is not saturated and that's probably white, proper, properly white balanced, and then I'll be able to take images of the sample itself that are nicely in focus. So. This leads us to step six. To correct for uneven illumination, you will need to take a blank image. There are two options. If the slide is transparent and your sample does not block a lot of light, uh, which is the condition right now, you take a blank image as usual. If your sample is very opaque uh, and it blocks a lot of the light, then there are, uh, there's an explanation of what to do there. You should probably consult with me because that, adds a, that, that can add a few complications later. In any case, uh, our sample uh, doesn't have that problem, so I'm just gonna move off of it. And take a blank image by clicking here. I'm going to name this back to video preview. Something very important that we need to do before continuing is to make sure that we save our settings. So we need to click this if it's uh, uh, not grayed out uh, because when we do the tiling, we're not gonna use this button to capture a single frame. We're gonna do this button, which will start an experimental protocol, which will look at, the, at these settings the last time they were saved. So we need to make sure to click this button here to save these settings so that when we do the tiling, that's, those are the settings it refers to. Okay, so we've taken the blank image uh, and saved the settings. The next is to check the straightness of the stage. So to do that, we need to uh, get back onto the sample. There we go. And what we're going to do is find a clear feature on the sample some sort of dot, ideally, or, or little speck of something. Uh, so for example, this would be a good candidate. And then we're gonna see if we move the stage from left to right, whether that moves without, uh, it moves also from left to right and not at an angle. It shouldn't move at an angle, but again, uh, when you're doing tiling, the investment of time is substantial, so you wanna double check that everything behaves as it should, because else you're gonna waste a lot of time. So how do we check that? We go up here and select the rectangular tool, and then we just draw a rectangle from one side of the image to the other, like that. Then we move the stage to place the sort of our, our test object uh, right above that line, and then we move all the way to the left, and then all the way to the right. If the stage is, is properly calibrated, and aligned with the camera, you'll see that that object moves right on top of that line. It never does this or this. That's exactly what you want. If uh, you see that they are moving diagonally, when you are just moving the joystick uh, left or right, uh, please let me know. Uh, that means that this part of the microscope has been knocked out of alignment and I need to fix it, okay? So in this case, that's fine. Um, all right, so what's the next step? Step eight is in the video menu, switch to XY stage view. So we're gonna go to video and go to XY stage. All right, so now we have this view. Uh, this view is necessary to set up tiling. 
uh, and it consists on the upper left hand corner of the image that you're seeing and this is a representation of the stage and various positions that we can mark. So we'll come back to this in a second. Now step nine in the stage menu, we're gonna click clear all points. So the stage, clear all points. What that does is it removes any points that anyone else had put in here, uh, which would be at random positions. Um, so you don't, want, uh, you don't want those contaminating your experiment. You want to mark points that are relevant to your sample, not have other points that someone else put on for a different sample that has nothing to do with what you're doing right now. Okay, so the next is we're gonna go to the edges of the region of interest and mark positions to generate an outline of the target area. So the way we're going to do that is I am going to move along the sample and look through the eyepiece. And when I reach the north, west, south, and east edges of the sample, I'm going to mark points here, which will show up as little red um, crosses. And that'll give me a sense of where the, the outlines of the sample are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I am now at the northernmost point in the sample. So I'm going to mark it by going to stage and saying add point. I can also do control shift A to add that point. Now I'm going to go to the west corner of the, state, of the uh, sample and repeat it and go to the south, then to the east, and repeat the same procedure. So I'll do that, and then I'll restart the video. Okay, so I've marked the west and the southern points, and now I'm gonna mark the eastmost point by going to stage, add point. You can see the points here. So this is where on the full uh, area where the stage can move, um, these points sort of live in that space. So that's an outline of our of our target area. Now we want to run a small test. So the idea for this test is again, when you're doing tiling, you don't want a mistake to ruin a tiling that might take half an hour if it's something really big. So you want to do a small test to make sure everything works. Uh, and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to draw a small region somewhere in the sample that includes two by two squares. Um, so it's ideal when you're doing this test to draw that in a region that has a lot of structure because you're gonna be looking at whether the stage moved uh, the, the amount of uh, distance it needed to and it's easier if, this, if the area that you're looking at has a lot of features. Um, so this, which is on the edge of the sample would be kind of a bad idea. I'll, I'll look for a region that's very structured and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So this area right here, uh, which is uh, sort of near the hippocampus is a very good candidate for doing this small test. Uh, because it has a lot of different features. And so it'll be easy to find whether the edges are moving as we expect them to. So the way to make a small two by two uh, area here is to just draw a small area. And you wanna make it a little bit smaller than, a, than the two by two is here, because else it tends to make more than two by two. Uh, so if you make it a little bit smaller like that, uh, then when you tell it to tile, it'll tile an approximately two by two uh, large area. So how do we tell it to tile? So we're gonna go in step 12 to the acquisition setup in the video menu and restore the setting called MSL Tiling BF. So we're gonna go, where's the mouse? Here we go, video, acquisition setup. And so this may be set to some random thing, like it could be set to something like this, for example. And so you don't want to have to turn all this stuff off and turn on the stuff that you want for the tiling. So we've created a, a simple tiling setting that you can use. And so if you go to restore, that tiling setting is called MSL, so they're alphabetical, tiling BF. So you just say, okay, that loads it up. You can change the name to whatever you want. Don't change this and also don't change the settings in here. Now do verify that everything it says here is correct. And the main thing is you need to make sure that the change XY, it says Loodle XY stage. If not, you'll need to let me know. Everything else is also important, but if that um, doesn't say Loodle XY stage, then, then we have a problem that, um, that, that I need to get involved with to solve. Uh, you're also going to look to see that it says XY stage ROI. You do not want to create a stitched composite image. Don't click on that, even though you eventually do want to do this. You don't want to do it in the software. You do want to save raw tiles and you don't want any focusing, okay? 
Um, so this looks good, so we can just say okay. And now we're going to go to step 13, which is to run the acquisition by pressing the record button. So remember, this is not the full experiment. This is just a test to make sure everything's working. So I'm gonna click on that button. You can see it's moving. Over here, you'll see a representation of the stage moving, and there you see the images that it took. If we go to this one, we click here, we can look at the individual images. So here's where we're gonna check that this worked. And the way we're gonna check is uh, we have a 10% overlap between images. So what we should see, and they move in a snake pattern. So it does this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, so this edge here of this image should overlap with the next one. So if we look at features, for example, this thing down here, that should be present on the left side of the next image. So we're looking for this and comparing to this here, and you can see that same feature is in both, okay? Then to tile three, it goes this way, so we should see this part on the top of tile three, and indeed, there it is. And then tile four is gonna to be to this side. Again, it's a snake pattern. So we should see, for example, that feature on the right side of tile four. Um, and so there it is, you can see there, this is tile three. So th this overlaps with this. Okay, so everything looks good. Again, if you don't, if you see a problem here, let me know. The idea for all of this is to make sure that when you run the full acquisition, um, everything is working as it should. Okay, so now that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run the full acquisition. So we're gonna go back to video preview and we're going to step 15, draw a region that includes the entire uh, region of interest. So we're going to use these settings here, uh, these positions as our references. So we're going to draw an area that includes all those positions. And if you want, you can make sure that you include all of them by making sure they're all included, though this tends to lead to more tiles than you want, but just to be safe, we can do that. Um, step 16 is to check the focus before starting the acquisition. So the way you wanna check the focus is you wanna to go to the middle, check the focus here to make sure it's good, and then move from side to side, so from left to right and from top to bottom, to make sure that uh, the focus doesn't change. If it does, that means probably that your slide is tilted, so you need to address that, uh, because this doesn't have any autofocus, so it's gonna take the same focal position all throughout, so if the slide is tilted, that's gonna screw up your imaging. So I'll do that, uh, and then I'll come back to the video. I've just verified that the focus looks fine, so if we are in the middle, as we are now, the sample is in focus. If we go to one side, the sample is still in focus. If we go all the way to the other side, the sample is still in focus. That's exactly what we want. I've already verified that is also true if we go to the top and bottom of the sample. Um, so we're almost ready to go. So the final thing is to count how many uh, squares approximately there are in the X or Y dimension. I recommend you count in the smaller dimension uh, and this is just to make the stitching easier because unfortunately velocity does not report how many um, tiles it takes in X and Y and we need that information for the stitching. So let's see, in the Y dimension we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit more. So probably it's gonna be either seven or eight um, tiles high. Uh, so remember that number and we'll use that later. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to run the acquisition by pressing the record button, that's step 18. So the record button is this red button here. We're gonna press that and what you'll see is it'll go to the top left-hand corner and it'll start taking images and moving from left to right. And so right up there, there's not much and then the sample starts to appear and then you start seeing uh, parts of the sample and you can see how uh, there's overlap as we would expect. Um, I'll restart the video when it's near the end. So it's almost uh, done. When it will finish, what you'll see is that it will export or save the images, and you need to wait until that's complete, as it says here in step 19. 
It's very important to wait until it finishes writing to the hard drive. You can see it's finishing writing image data to disk. If you get, if you interrupt it at this point, uh, bad things will happen. You'll lose all the data from the tiling. And so you just need to wait. And this can take a substantial amount of time. Uh, so you just have to be patient. The writing is complete. You can see that the stage moves to the upper left-hand corner. And in here, we now have many, many, many images, all right? Uh, we will be able to check later uh, by, by knowing that there were about seven or eight in the Y dimension, um, sort of what the size of the, uh, of, of sort of what the size of X was by, by taking the total size and dividing it by seven or eight and seeing if we get an, an integer number, okay? So now what we need to do is export the data. And so we have two things to export. One was the blank, which I forgot to export. The other is the full tiling. So uh, very important when we do that, uh, we need to follow the instructions here uh, to make sure uh, that things are exported correctly. And so I'm going to go first to blank. I'm going to go to export. I'm, a, I'm gonna create a new folder called exports and with today's date. And in here, I'm gonna put the blank, and I'm gonna to go to options, and make sure that it says convert to RGB for publication, and that these two are unchecked. Even if you just did this, you need to go there. If not, the data will be uh, incorrectly saved. I'm gonna hit export. Now I need, so I've exported the blank, now I need to export all of these images. So I'm gonna select the first one, shift click all the way to the bottom. I can also, instead of shift clicking, I can select uh, things here by dragging. Uh, then I'm gonna either go to File Export or right-click here and say Export. And I don't wanna put it in the same folder as this one. I wanna create a, uh, a subfolder only of the images that will need to be stitched. And here, I wanna go again to Options. Even though I just went there uh, when I saved the blank, verify that all this is correct, say OK. And then we want to go to naming. And uh, what we want is to have this naming scheme. Append a numerical subscript, count from one and increment by one, and pad with leading zeros to three. Uh, this will be the most efficient way to then get this stitched. Uh, and that is described in the instructions here on point B. So we're going to click OK. And then export. So it takes a while, it can take even longer if you have more. Uh, note, do not put these images in the same folder as the blank file, we already did that. Your images should be around nine megabytes in size. If they aren't, redo the exporting, making sure the check options are correct. So if we go now to data, user data, Pablo exports from today. If we look at these, for example, and go to view, details, they should be about nine megabytes, which is about the size. If you see that they're very different, that means you made a mistake and you didn't go to options when you saved, okay? Um, there's a few other notes here. Uh, it suggests you generate a new library for each data set. That's because these libraries, when you do a, a large amount of stitching, can have a lot of files and they become unstable uh, if they have a lot of images in them. Uh, if you don't change your imaging conditions, you can reuse the same blank on a given day, so you don't need to take a blank for every one. Uh, and when you export your final images, they should have names that are numbered, 001, 002, etc. So that's exactly what's going on here. These are the exported files, except for the blank, uh, which is called blank. Uh, so with this, we are now ready to stitch the acquired images, which we'll do in Fiji, and I'll uh, do it uh, recording uh, my computer screen so you can see a little bit more in detail which settings uh, I adjust and how.